In today's first episode of the Any A Real podcast, we are going to talk to you about why is self-awareness important as a realtor and what does that all mean? Maybe you're a mom, maybe you're just a woman in real estate, just trying to do your thing and hustle and you're feeling exhausted, you're feeling torn, you are trying to feel like you're producing and being successful, but you're not quite sure If you're doing what you're doing, you feel like you're kind of going against the grain. There's another social media platform out there. How on earth are you going to keep up? Well, I have the ticket for you. So let's start on this journey together in the Any Real podcast. Welcome to the Any Real podcast, women, moms, real estate, and the Enneagram. I'm your host, Melody Wilson, a certified Enneagram and real estate coach. If you're a high achieving realtor mom looking to find balance and unlock your full potential, you're in the right place. In this podcast, we explore the intersection of women, real estate, and the Enneagram. Join me as I provide Enneagram insights and practical tools tailored specifically for women in the real estate industry. Together, we'll uncover strategies to navigate the unique challenges and opportunities and find harmony in all areas of your life. So what is the Enneagram? The Enneagram, just to dive right into it, is a self-awareness tool. And the Enneagram is, when they say, when you say Ennea, that means nine and gram. So simply put, the Enneagram has nine different types. Now, as we journey together on this podcast journey, you're going to learn so much more because the Enneagram isn't just nine types. It's not just another personality test. This tool is going to help you level up in ways you've never even imagined possible. For me, when I first came upon it in 2018, it really helped me understand myself and how I'm wired. And as soon as I figured that out, it helped me so much in terms of my own self-awareness, my satisfaction with my relationships, with work, all of the things was so important. So self-awareness is so important because we need that for our emotional health. And our emotional health is, has been sacrificed a lot. I feel with just the fact that we're always at everyone's beck and call, right? As moms, we are always putting our kids first, our household first. We're somehow always left to the wayside. And when I say that, think about who eats last, who eats first, who are you thinking about when you're planning for groceries? Who are you thinking about when you're thinking about the day itself? So being self-aware doesn't mean being selfish. It means being aware of your needs, taking care of yourself so that you can take care of others. And it also is important because then you can recognize when you're in unhealth and when you are growing. That is so powerful to understand that. Now, a lot of us are not self-aware because we're so busy with our lives, running from thing to thing to thing to thing. You can't slow down. Down. And when we do slow down, maybe we get sick and that forces us to slow down. Or maybe we're just kind of like, oh, I don't, I don't like this. Let, let me just pull up my social media and go onto Facebook, go onto Instagram, go onto threads. There's so many different ways that you can distract yourself and you think you're relaxing, you think you're rela- you're feeding yourself. But all those things, just a spoiler alert, is not going to feed you and it's not going to let you grow. So self-awareness is also super important because of growth and knowing when you are going into health and when you are going to unhealth. So one of the teachers that I've learned the Enneagram about, one of the things they say is the when you're moving into stress, those are signs, symptoms, kind of like when you're driving on a road and there's rumble strips on the road. Well, those are warning you, hey, get back on the road because otherwise you're coming off the road. That's those things that, that, are, that they look like in stress. And the Enneagram has a tool in which it tells you These are the things you're going to look like when you're in stress. And this is what you're going to look like when you're in health. When you look at the Enneagram, a lot of people will try to do testing because they think that's the quickest way. And there we go again with quick in terms of figuring out who you are. But I would challenge you that it's not about finding out quickly. This is self-awareness journey is a slow bake. And I'm not a slow person. I like to move fast. I like to know things fast. And as realtors, we want things done yesterday. And so you want to be able to know right away. But I'm going to challenge you in this any real podcast journey to come along on this journey. I'm going to talk to you about all nine types today and kind of what they are, what their core fears and motivations are. Um, I'm going to le- teach you how to start the journey 
But as we go along, the next episode, I will focus on one type specifically so you can learn more about that specific type. And as you learn about all nine types, don't just think about it in the lens of who am I, but also think about who do you know? The more you know about the people and how they are wired, it allows you to understand yourself better when you can understand others better. So it's not just a tool to figure out who am I and it's a dinner conversation, but it's an actual, hey, okay, so if I know that this type specifically moves to this in stress and looks like this in stress, how can I better serve my spouse in terms of, hey, I know that when he does this, he's probably moving into stress. What can I do? Have we had conversations before about how to talk to each other and how to help each other come out of the stress, right? You talk about your relationships at home. Maybe you have a partnership at work or other colleagues in your team, in your brokerage, how can you help each other? It's so important. So I want to go over the nine different types there before we jump into the nine different types, they are kind of split up into different, they call them triads. So triad just means groups of three. And the Enneagram likes to split things off in different groupings of three. So the one triad that the first one we talk about is and it's just for the basics is basically figuring out where how do you make decisions how do you respond to life and there's three main ones there's the head the heart and the gut so the head are people that go to their mind first they're logical thinkers they analyze things and they process things now keep in mind all of us use all three of these things to make decisions, but one is going to rule over the other two. Sometimes you might even have two that kind of are really close together. So just take note and observe and just take the time to just think about, let's just not my gut instinct, not my first reaction of that's me, but just think and observe and think about yourself in situations, whether it's at work or at home. I know that some people think, well, at work, I look, I'm this way. And at home, I'm this way. The powerful thing with the Enneagram is it doesn't change your health levels change, right? The way you show up changes, your circumstances change, but really your core fear and motivation never truly change if you're actually self-aware. So someone who processes things with the head, there's three different types in the Enneagram that will relate to the head. Then in the heart, that's the, all the feelings, right? So that person might cry really easily, um, move very easily, doesn't mean that you are for sure heart heavy if that's it, but typically people who have that desire for affection and connection and knowing how people are feeling and doing in the space, that's somebody who's heart heavy. Now with the gut instinct people, spoiler alert, that's me. So here's me talking about feelings and headspace, but gut, that's the space where you know, you're in a decision, you're like, oh, my gut says this is bad, or my gut says this is going to happen, and then it happens. That's somebody who's got that, it's a gut instinct. It's not related to the heart, it's not related to the head. Now, they're all intertwined, but the gut kind of overtakes that. So if you think about that, and you think, okay, which one do I relate to more? I'm not going to spoil it and let you know which types are, because it you can by default want to automatically think you took a test and you were a four. So now you're like relating to all the four things. I'm purposely not going to tell you what types these different areas are to help you with that self-awareness because it's important for you to really understand and discover those types of things. Right. And different types move into different stresses and different, um, what do you call it? They're different there are different reactions to different circumstances. And sometimes if you're in health, you'll move into a certain direction. But if you're in unhealth, you're going to move completely opposite. So it doesn't mean you all of a sudden changed your personality type by any means. Now, with the Enneagram type, I will tell you the nine types just so that you have an idea of what they are. Some Enneagram specialists, experts will just use the types, the numbers, like type one, type two, type three, type, right? But other ones will put the name beside it. So for example, the type one is the perfectionist. Now, there may be some negative connotations towards if you are a perfectionist, you're like, I'm not a perfectionist. You don't want to relate to that. 
However, that's why sometimes they take that word out. They just talk about type one and type two is usually known as the helper. So if you don't relate to those words, then people kind of, you know, push it to the side. So I want to make sure and challenge you that you don't just automatically turn that off just because you think you don't relate to that. I know for me, when I first started this journey, I actually thought I was a three, but threes and eights are actually quite similar. And so I really had to dig down and be really honest with myself to figure out, you know, if this is, if I'm the right, if I typed myself correctly or not. Now, don't worry. You can always, we call it try it on for size. You can try on different numbers and see if that's really who you are. And the Enneagram is not a place where it confines you into a box and say, well, this is your type. So therefore this is what's going to happen. No, a truly self-aware person is going to understand that they're growing. And if you, as we continue to, to go through this journey, you'll see that everything is kind of tied together and they're all kind of related in reality. So you don't have to feel like you're stuck there. You might think, oh, I'm this and this, and we're going to walk you through that journey and figure that out. But it's important as realtors to take this time to understand who you are, because if you don't take this time to understand who you are, you're going to burn out and you probably already have burned out. And then you think you've got rest and then you're back again and then you burn out again. So it's so important to understand who you are and how you're wired, because then you know what your boundaries are. Then you know what you can take on. You know what gives you life. You know what makes you tick. And it's okay if you are not like somebody else, because that's not how you were built. So you might not be that person that wants to be all over social media. And you know what? As a real estate coach, I'm going to tell you, You don't always have to be on there. That's not how you're wired. There are other ways to be successful as a realtor. And I think the biggest thing I want people to know is find out who you are so that you are able to live your fullest as who you are. Now, you also want to challenge yourself out of your comfort zones. If you know this is not in your comfort zone and you know you need to pop onto video because video is going to give you more options to attract the people that are similar to you. So for example, if you're thinking, I don't want to go on video because I'm kind of introverted. I don't really like talking to tons of people. I'm not very loud. I don't talk with my hands and I can't be that person. And if I am, I look really weird because what do I, what do I do with these hands? Right? Well, guess what? Just be you because on video, when you are being yourself and you, if let's say you're not an entertainer, then you can educate people right? You can tell them what you know, you can help them as a realtor with, that's kind of what I've done with my YouTube channel is I've educated people because I feel more um, comfortable in that lane. People, some of my friends would say I'm funny, but I also don't think I'm super funny. So then I feel really awkward doing strange things, but that's not to say you won't find me on Instagram being weird, doing some sort of trending reel. I will push myself out of that comfort zone. And I do have a Um, personality, like the seven wing and the Enneagram where it's a little bit more fun. So, and that's only in health. So that's why it's important to know who you are as a realtor. It's important because once you figure that out, it makes what you do a lot simpler. Being a realtor is definitely not easy. There's so many different things in place that you have to do, but there's lots of, lots of opportunity and lots of places to really enjoy yourself. So I'm going to go grab my uh, nine types overview book so that we're going to go over that and we're going to go into it in depth. But today it's just going to be kind of like a brief overview. So I wanted to grab it so that you guys, I'll read off what the core fear and motivation is and see if it resonates with you. And then we'll dive into each type in a lot more, um, just a lot more. And I went to the Enneagram University, so shout out to them in terms of getting my certification. And this is the book that she provided. And so it's very helpful to have these conversations. I mean, I don't believe in recreating something when it's already there. So the type one core qualities, your core fear is being bad, corrupt, evil, or wrong. So what does that look like? Being bad is somebody who doesn't want to be, they don't want to be a rule breaker. That's their fear. Their innermost deepest fear. If they're being really honest with themselves, they don't want to be bad. I mean, now all of us don't want to be bad, 
right? So all of these fears you're probably going to relate to, but one of them is going to make you feel super uncomfortable. And you're going to say, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't want to listen to this anymore. This is too much. That's probably your core fear. So if we look at the type one's um, core desire, it's the opposite. It's being good, being pure, being perfect, having integrity and doing the right thing. So you can see the two are quite related. So think about that. Which one do you relate to this at all? Do you not relate to it at all? Maybe you can think of somebody that, you know, has that kind of symptom. Now I'm going to read off later as we go through the different Enneagram types, more descriptive things about a type one, more about type two. So the more you learn about it, the more you're going to understand it. Now a type two core fear is being unwanted, unloved, doesn't, they don't want to be replaceable. Type twos are going to have a hard time recognizing and admitting that this is actually their core fear. They don't want to admit that they're not wanted because they actually put them themselves in places and always want to be helpful. Hence the nickname helper. So they kind of, a lot of times will help even when not asked. And sometimes that's a good thing. And sometimes as we all know around, it can be annoying because it was never something we had asked for to begin with. Their core desire, the reason they do this is because they want to be loved. They want to be wanted. They want to be appreciated and they want to actually be seen as selfless. So it's kind of ironic because if you're truly selfless, you're not thinking about how can I be selfless, but type twos tend to kind of do that. And, you know, a lot of women will mistype as a type two. And so I want to bring that up as well, because a lot of women will be listening to this podcast and a lot of people think, oh, that's me. That's who I am. I relate to the type two the most, but really you need to, again, be self-aware and slow yourself down and really listen to the other types. You actually might be another type. Now you may actually be a type two, but type twos tend to be the most commonly mistyped. Um, so for type threes, core fears are failure being exposed, being seen as invaluable or seen as worthless. Now, there's a lot of realtors that are type threes. Just a spoiler alert, there's, there's two different types that I see as realtors. Type three is one of them. And they do bend towards the type two because realtors, we like to help people, right? We're, we're in it to help people and help them with buying a home, help them with selling a house or whatever the case may be. So you will find certain typings more prominent in as realtors than others. But a type three specifically, their desire to achieve, to be respected, to be seen as successful, to be a role model, to be an influencer, right? Like in our world of influencing and on social media, this is the person that has tens of thousands of followers. And if you don't, if you're a type three and you don't, haven't figured out how to be successful in that, you struggle a lot because you want to be seen as successful. So you'll obsess maybe for success. And also now are we guilty? All of this is those top 10 lists, right? So you show your, your database, you show your social media and you share with them and you, you shamelessly plug yourself and say, Hey, look at me. I got number one. Hey, look at me. I'm number two. I mean, at the end of the day, clients don't actually know, or do they actually care if you are number one, two or three of 50 of a hundred of a thousand, they don't have a clue. So, but type threes, you want it, you need it. And it's okay. If you know that that's what you are. I, my thing is just claim it, claim it. And don't, don't pretend that you didn't get this on your own. Don't pretend that you didn't push and work really hard. Type threes are workaholics. They tend to be workaholics. Um, type four, your core qualities for core fears is being defective, mundane, and significant. So this type doesn't want to be seen as everybody else. They don't want to jump on the boat when everyone else is there. They want to be unique and different. So if they are going to jump on, they're going to be loud and clear about how they're different. So maybe it's how they dress. Maybe it's how they present themselves. Maybe, you know, realtors used to look a certain way. I started in real estate about 14 years ago, 15 years ago, and we wore suits and business attire. I mean, part of me wore that, I think, because I was younger and I wanted to look older, but that was the regular thing. That's what people would wear, right? And so 
Now people are a lot less formal one for relatability sake, but there's a lot of people that have tried to make a mark and a creative brand for themselves, which is different. So you'll see realtors that don't even look like your typical realtor on purpose. So that may be a sign of a four, but it also tell you this, these, you can have wings, which they're related to each other. So we'll go into that in another episode. Um, but their core desire of a type four is to find themselves to be unique and special and to live out their authentic identity. So they don't like to really be like a type three that you can see some fours with some threes in them, but threes don't always, they're not always authentic because they're trying to um, fit in with everybody else and they're always shape shifting. So they're really good with people because they know how to change, but type fours want that authenticity. They don't want somebody that's not real. Uh, type five, their core fear is being incompetent, incapable. Obviously, most of us don't want to be seen as incompetent and incapable. But the person who is a type five, who, who has that in them, it is like to the core essence that they don't want to be seen as incompetent. It's not even just being seen. It's, it's truly feeling incompetent. So they don't know how to fake it till you make it. They don't feel comfortable doing that. They want to know. They want to be competent. So their core desire is to be competent and capable and to be self-sufficient. They don't want to be relying on anybody else, but they also don't want to get help, but they also want to be competent. So when there is something new, so for example, 15 years ago, there was no such thing as electronic signing for real estate. And all of a sudden it started to creep in. I was one of the first. There's a lot of the type fives that would have been very against that only for the sake, if you looked peeled back the layers, is because they felt incompetent because they didn't know what this was. And so they don't want to, they don't want to delve into it. Same as social media, right? Video, Instagram, YouTube. They don't want to go into it because they don't feel comfortable. Now I will give you a spoiler alert. Type fives tend to be introverted and they tend to be a little bit socially awkward. Not always, but they do tend to kind of keep within themselves. And we'll talk about that more in another one episode, but there's a lot to be said about all the different types. That's why today I'm just going over the core fears and desires. We've got type sixes. So they fear fear itself. So type ones have this negative voice in their head and type sixes have a whole host of voices in their head that are causing them to second guess and fear many things. It's an automatic thing where they just have these irrational thoughts all the time of, oh no, what if I don't get this client? Oh, that client didn't text me back. Does that mean I offended them? Does that mean that they're not buying with me anymore? There's a lot of these things that now we all can share those same types of insecurity, but with type sixes, they fear fear itself. It's just crippling. Uh, being on their own and without support or guidance, guidance is also something that they fear. They want to be around people. So it's not like type fives where they don't want to have people. These guys want to have people. They want to be surrounded by support. You might find type sixes on uh, teams. They're, they make really good team members because they're also known to be really loyal. Uh, the core desire is to be safe and secure and to feel supported and stable and grounded. So if they have a team they can plug themselves into or maybe a partnership that they can plug themselves into. It's somewhere where they can really thrive and they'll be able to just really grow and, you know, kind of quiet those voices in their head about, you know, all the different second guessing things. Because in real estate, there's a lot of things to learn. There's a lot of moving parts. We're always putting out fires as a, think about as a mom, you're putting out fires at home and at work. So, you know, you add that to on top. If you don't know who you are and you're a six, you could be very anxious. Uh, this is one of the most anxious types of all nine types. Now, like, like you keep saying these disclaimers, you can be anxious and not be a type six. You could be depressed and not be six because they they're known to move towards that. But if you're, like I said earlier, in unhealth, you're in stress mode of the other types, you can move into stress and, and look like that. So we will dive into that a lot more later. Type sevens are known to be more fun loving. So this is the other one that I mentioned. I see a lot of as realtors, they fear being deprived and trapped in emotional pain. They, they fear being bored and being limited. So real estate tends to do really well for type sevens because things are always changing. Every day is different. 
Uh, even every client is different. You're with clients for a short period of time, then it changes. So you're constantly, it's constantly changing. They also fear missing out. Let's be honest and be real. They want to be where everyone else is at conferences. They're at all of the different networking events. They want to just be where everyone is. They're the first ones typically to adapt to things. So when threads first came out, I guarantee you there's a lot of sevens on threads because they don't want to miss out on anything. And actually, I think one of the celebrities, actually Michael Bublé, his thread, he only has one right now that I saw, is I'm just here because of my crippling uh, FOMO, their fear of missing out, right? So seven's desire is to be truly satisfied, fulfilled, and content. It's really difficult for them to ever attain it, but that's what they strive for. That's what their desire is. And that was what their core fear is. Now, type eight is somebody that I can relate to a lot because that's who I am. Um, type apes fear being controlled, being seen as weak. I don't want to be manipulated. And the, my core desire is to be in control, strong and powerful in order to protect themselves. Now let's dive in a little bit on that because you might say, I don't have to be in control. And that's true. I don't have to be in control. But if you're really honest with yourself, are you really truly okay to let go and not be in control? that tends to be a desire that eights have. They want to be seen as strong. Usually they are strong, very outspoken. We're always told that we're too much. And until I understood the Enneagram and who, I, how I was wired, I always felt like I had to be less. And it's really hard for me to be less because even if I am less, I'm still more than everyone around me. So once I realized that it's okay, that's how I was wired, and the protecting themselves, this is a really good attribute for a realtor because I want to protect my clients. So I am doing my due diligence. I am helping them. I am, I am there. But sometimes I find myself at fault trying to be a hero too much. Sometimes we don't need to be heroes for everybody and everything. You got to really be self-aware. And that's where that self-awareness comes into play, where you understand a lot more. There are so many things. There's so many different pages. We're going to talk about different aspects of each Enneagram type, which I will talk about after we go over type nines, core fear and motivation. So the core fears or core fear of type nine is they fear conflict. They do not like conflict. And I will speak very passionately about this because I'm married to one. Um, so I understand what that looks like, what fearing conflict looks like. They don't want to be overlooked. They don't want to be dismissed. They want to be, they want their voice to be heard. Uh, however, because they want that peace, they don't usually speak up, even though they want their voice to be heard. Sometimes they don't even know what their voice is, actually. Their core desire is to have inner peace and stability. So they want that stability. They don't want to uh, obstruct. They don't want to obstruct themselves, their own inner peace, never mind their closest relationships and those around them. So it's a real trick. Type nines have a lot of things that they need to kind of work through and they can look like almost all of the types because they don't actually know who they are. They're known a lot to be what's called asleep to themselves. They don't understand um, what self-awareness work even is. So in this journey, we are going to go through on all, all nine types. We're going to talk about everyone's strengths and struggles. We're going to talk about how your internal and childhood messages affect how you've been wired. And we're going to talk about your wings. Wings are floppy wings. So you've got a wing to your left and wing to your right. We're going to talk about how that looks. Because Enneagram is, if you haven't seen a graph, it's like a, a circle with nine types all around. And a wing is to the left and the right of that number. We're going to talk about your center of intelligence. So in the beginning of this podcast, I talked and asked you about which did you relate to more, head, heart, or gut? That's the center of intelligence. So if you remember that, you can now think and lock that in your brain and see if that's something you can relate to. Arrows is what is how you look in stress and how you look in growth. So there are numbers that you will move towards. They're healthy habits. You will move towards the negative of a different number when you are in stress. So we're going to talk about that as well. We'll discuss the levels of development in terms of the Enneagram, how each type looks like in each of those different levels, whether you're healthy, average, or unhealthy. My most favorite part is the instinctual variance. So when we get to that stage, 
That's going to be later on in our podcast because you're going to need to know the basics before we get down to the instinctual variants. But that's going to untap and explode this nine types into 27. So you might feel really overwhelmed already. And I will not go into that right now. But I loved that when I was able to do some basic self-awareness and then I was able to level it up and get even further in there. It was really important. We're going to talk about how each type shows up in relationships, whether they be at work or at home. That's really important. And their defense mechanisms. We're going to talk about their, your emotional patterns. We're going to talk about um, how you look like as a mom with parenting. And we're going to talk about a few different triads. I talked to you at the beginning about how Enneagram tends to like to put groupings of three. We will talk about that as well. And my most excited, exciting piece is we're going to talk about how you can grow. So at the end of each one, we're going to talk about how each type can grow. My challenge to you as that type, how are you going to grow? How are you going to take what you've learned and apply it? So we're not just taking this in as just knowledge, but we're actually applying it. So it's really important that you start the self-awareness journey. And by listening to this podcast and subscribing to this podcast, you're not going to miss out on any of the new updates that we're going to do every single week. And eventually we're going to have some guests on here and talk to some other realtors who are moms, who are women. We're going to talk about their different typings. We're going to talk about things, not just on self-awareness, but we're going to talk about video, for example. I'm big into technology, but I want to understand this whole Enneagram podcast is about why we do things and why we don't do things and giving you tools to overcome your mindset so that you can actually take your mindset, how you're wired and conquer and be a dominant force on threads. Is that, if that's something you want to be, uh, be a dominant force on YouTube. I want you to understand that success looks different no matter who you are, no matter what type you are, success looks different. And I want to change the success definition in real estate that it's not just, I want to challenge you. It's not just about the award levels and how high up you are. Number one, number two, number three, but actually how much time are you getting to yourself? How much time are you spending with your family? Not just physically present, but emotionally present and connecting with your peers, connecting with your spouse and just enjoying life because we do not get into real estate to be overworked, to be stressed out, to be overweight. I'll share that part of my journey with you as well too, because I also went down that journey of losing myself to the point where I had a lot of weight to lose. And it is possible to get yourself back into physical health. Once I was able to sort out the, like the emotional health the mental health side, I could then move over to taking care of myself physically. But sometimes physical is important first, because if you're literally going to be potentially having a heart attack, that's not a good thing. You want to address that ASAP. So if this is your first time listening to this podcast, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to our very first episode. I would love for you to comment in the comment section. If you're finding me on YouTube, if you haven't followed me already, I am on Instagram and threads at melody underscore Wilson. I post about the Enneagram. I post about tips and tricks for realtors. I would love to see you on there and I'd love to connect with you.